All right, in this video, we're going to talk about section 3.1. This begins chapter 3, dealing with additional derivative topics. The first section, we're going to look at the constant E and continuous compound interest. And here in this video, we're going to evaluate continuous compound interest functions, solve equations in the form of the compound interest formula, solve applications involving continuous compound interest, and solve applications involving exponential growth and decay. So first we're gonna look at the constant function E. Now, in one of the videos that for this course, I did talk about uh, the constant E. By definition, it is this irrational number, 2.718-281-828-459. It goes on forever without end. And the number E is also defined as either one of the following limits. And that's this. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n, and that quantities to the nth power. Or we can simplify that as the limit as s approaches 0, 1 plus s raised to the 1 over s power. Okay. Now, first of all, let's talk about the uh, compound interest formula for continuous compounding. That's theorem 1. We're going to let P be the principal, the R be the in annual interest rate, T is the time in years, N is the number of compounds per year, and A is going to be the amount realized at the end of the time period. So your continuous compounding formula is just going to be this. A is equal to P times E to the RT. A is equal to P times E to the RT. And we're going to use that compound interest formula, continuous compound interest formula, with some examples like this one. Here we're going to use calculate to evaluate A to the nearest cent. So here we got A is equal to $8,000 times E to the 0 0.01 times T. And we're going to evaluate that for T is equal to 3 and for 6 and for 10. All right, let's start with for t is equal to 3. So here we just take a is equal to 8,000 times e to the 0 0.01 times t, which is 3. Now, since we're dealing with money amounts, we're going to round to the nearest uh, cent as indicated in the uh, directions. So in this case here, we have 8,000. We'll type in 8,000. Now for the E, need to mention here for the E, there's E to the X, and that's above this LN key. To access E to the X, you have to pressure blue second key and LN. The second key and then LN will give you the E. And then we can type in the exponential part 0 0.01 times 3. And then we can just go ahead and press enter. Now, again, we're going to round to the nearest penny or to two decimal places in this case. So it'll be 8243.64. Here's the 3. To the right of it is 6. It's bigger than 5. So the 3 increases to a 4. So it'll be $8,243. And 64 cents. That would be what A would be equal to when T is equal to 3. All right, now for T is equal to 6. Using that same formula, A is equal to $8,000 times E to the 0 0.01 times T. T this time would be six. So in this case here, if I type in 8,000, again, second and LN on the left-hand side for the E, uh, 0 0.01 times six. To two decimal place, that would be 8494.69 or $8,494.69. $8,494.69. 
which is what that is, okay? And now for T is equal to 10. This would be 8,000 times E to the 0 0.01 times T, this time is gonna be 10. So here we got 8,000. And then second LN for the E, 0 0.01 times 10. And if we were to round this off to two decimal places, it will be $8,841.37. Okay. So that's how we use calculate to a calculator to a evaluate problems with a continuous compound interest. Okay. All right, take a look at this example, number two. It states this. Recently, a certain bank offered a 10-year CD or certificate of deposit that earns 14.38% compounded continuously. So we're dealing with compounded continuously here again. And we're going to use the given information to answer these questions. In part A, if $10,000 is invested in this CD, how much will it be worth in 10 years? Okay, so our time is going to be 10 years, by the way. And we have a $10,000 investment. So that means your P is $10,000. And the interest rate is 14.38%. Now, if we convert 14.38% into a decimal, it will be 0.1438. If you recall, when you change your percent to a decimal, you drop your percent sign, move the decimal point two places to the left, or take 14.38, divide that by 100, and that would be your decimal without the percent. All right, so we have enough information to use that com continuous compound interest formula, A is equal to P times E to the RT. So here we're gonna find the amount. So A is equal to P, which is 10,000, times e to the r, that's going to be 0 0.1438 times t, which is 10. So in this case here, um, we have 10,000, then second ln for the e, and then 0 0.1438 times 10. And we're going to round this off to two decimal places. So this will be $42,122. And this two will round that, that eight will round the two up to a three, 63 cents. So the amount that will be in the account or the amount of that CD would be worth well, after 10 years will be $42,122.63. So that's part A. Now, part B is how long will it take for the account to be worth $35,000? And we're looking for the number of years it would take. So in part B, we're trying to find out what T is. So here we're going to have, of course, A is equal to P times E to the RT because we are still dealing with continuous compounding. So we want the account to be worth $35,000. So this is going to be what A is equal to. So A is equal to 35000 
So this will be 35,000. That's equal to P, which is uh, $10,000 times E to the R, that's going to be 0 0.1438 times T. Because T is what we're trying to find here in this case. All right, so to get E to the 0 0.1438 T by itself, we want to get the exponential expression by itself. It's being multiplied by 10,000, so we're going to divide both sides of this equation by 10,000. And when we do that, we're going to have 35,000 divided by 10,000, which is 3.5, equaling to e to the 0 0.1438 t. And then, since I know from college algebra that e and ln are inverses of each other, we're going to take the natural logarithm on both sides. Now, the left side, it'll still be ln of 3.5. And there's also a property that when you have ln of e to whatever your exponent is, is that exponent. So e to the ln of 0.1438t will be 0.1438t. And then to solve for t, we're going to divide both sides by 0.1438. So T then will be equal to, let's see, press the LN key and then type in 3.5, close your parentheses, because that amount will be divided by 0 0.1438, then hit enter. We're going to round to, I think they say two decimal places as needed. So this will be approximately 8.71. Years. So it will take approximately 8.71 years for a $10,000 investment in a CD to be worth $35,000. All right, here's another example. An investor bought stock for $50,000. 11 years later, the stock was sold for $70,000. If interest is compounded continuously, what annual nominal rate of interest does the did the original $50,000 investment earn? Okay, so now we're looking for the annual interest rate. And this is compounded continuously, by the way. So we know we're going to need to use A is equal to P times E R T. A is equal to P times E to the R T, I should say. So now, what we need to do here. is identify what we have. All right, so the stock was uh, $50,000. That's what P is. It was sold for $70,000. So that means it reached to $70,000. And it happened 11 years later. So T is 11. So now we're trying to find out what R is. The, annual interest rate or the annual nominal rate. So let's do some substitution here. Your A is $70,000 and that's equal to P, which is 50,000 times E to the R is what we're trying to find, but T is 11. So I'm gonna say 11 R because T is 11. R is what we're trying to find. So there's our exponential equation. And to get that exponential part e to the 11r by itself, we need to 
divide both sides by 50,000. So here we're going to have e to the 11r, and that's going to be equal to, let's see, if I do 70,000 divided by 50,000, I think I can do that without a lot of decimals here. That will be 1.4. So e to the 11r will be equal to 1.4. And because e and ln are inverses of each other, I would take the natural logarithm on both sides of this equation. Now on the right side, ln of e to whatever my exponent is, is that exponent. So L, ln of e to the 11r is 11r. That will be equal to the natural logarithm of 1.4. And then finally divide both sides by 11. Your r is gonna be in the form of a decimal. I can tell you that. So ln of 1.4, close parentheses, divided by 11, you'll get 0 0.03058. Because I think they want this to two decimal places. Zero point zero three zero five. Eight. Now, as a percent, you, you can either multiply by 100, which I'm going to do right here, and that will give me 3.058. Now, the two decimal places, it will be approximately 3.06%. 3.06%. So in this case here, the annual nominal rate of interest that the original investment of $50,000 earned was at 3.06%. Okay. All right. This one asks for the number of years required for an investment to double in value if it is, a, if it is appreciating at a rate of 5% compounded continuously. So in this case here, A is equal to P times E to the RT, because it is continuous compounding. Now, we don't know what P is, and we're not going to need to know what P is, because here, if we have some investment P, if the investment's going to double, then that means double would imply that your amount will have to be two times whatever P is. Okay, because we have some amount, we don't know what that is, but we want it to double. So if P is the amount of the investment, for it to double, it will have to be two times P. A will have to be two times P. Let's substitute the A with that two times P. So we got two P is equal to P, times e to the rt. Oh, by the way, at the rate of 5%. And 5% as a decimal would be 0 0.05. So that means here I need to uh, go ahead and put p e to the 0 0.05t. Okay. So I need to replace the r with 0 0.05. And now we can solve this exponential equation. We can get the exponential part of e to the 0.05t by itself by dividing both sides of this equation by p. So that means 2 is equal to e to the 0.05t. And to get t by, well, we have to take the natural log on both sides since e and ln are inverses of each other. And then ln of e to whatever your exponent is, is that exponent. So ln of e to the 0.05t will be 0.05t. That's equal to ln of 2. And then to get t by itself, we'll divide both sides by 0.05. 
So that means T is equal to, let's see, ln of two, close parentheses, divided by 0 0.05. Hit enter. Round this off to two decimal places, that would be approximately 13.86. So it would take approximately 13. 0.86, and the time is going to be in years, 13.86 years, for an investment to double at 5% compounded continuously. Okay, here's an example of something that's exponential. And this deals with exponential growth and decay. So here's example five. A radioactive element decays according to the function Q is equal to Q sub zero e to the RT, where Q sub zero is the amount of the substance at time T equals zero. R is the continuous compound rate of decay. T is the time in years, and Q is the amount of the substance at time T if the continuous compound rate of the element per year is this. R is equal to negative 0 0.000296. How long will it take a certain amount of this element to decay to half the original amount? That's the period being the half-life of a substance. All right, so what we're looking for is this. That we want our Q to be equal to one-half Q sub zero. That's the initial amount that we have and we want it to be half that. So Q will be one half of Q. And here our function is this, Q is equal to Q sub zero e to the RT. Yeah. And we're told what R is. That's negative 0 0.000296. Is that's the continuous compound rate of the element per year. All right, let's do some substitution here. Q will be one half of Q sub zero, equaling to Q sub zero times E to the R. That's going to be negative 0 0.000296. T is what we're trying to find. Because the question is, how long will it take a certain amount of this element to decay to half the original amount. Now let's go ahead and solve this. We can divide both sides by Q sub zero. So here we got one half and that's equal to Q sub zero is divided out here. You're left with E to the negative 0 0.000296 times T. And since E and LN are inverses of each other, I will take the natural log on both sides of this equation. And LN of E to whatever my exponent is, is that exponent. So LN of E to the negative 0 0.000296T will be negative 0. 0, 0, 0, 0.000296T. That will be equal to ln of one half. And then to solve for t, we divide both sides by negative 0 0.000296. That would mean t is equal to Let's see, ln 
one half would be one divided by two, and I'm gonna close the parentheses around that. That would be divided by negative 0 0.000296. And then hit enter. And I think they want this to the nearest whole number. So that means in this case here, 2341.7 would be 2342. So it will be 2,342 years. Okay. So take 2,342 years for a certain amount to decay to half the original amount. And finally, example six is probably a, just a simple exponential equation that you've probably seen in college algebra before, but it is it, but it is a problem similar to that in the homework as well. So here you're gonna solve for t to two decimal places. You have three is equal to e to the seven t. As you can see, the exponential part is already by itself. The exponential expression is by itself. So, and since E and LN are inverses of each other, we can just simply take the natural log on both sides. All right. So LN of E to whatever your exponent is, is that exponent. So LN of E to the 7T will be 7T. So 7t is equal to ln of 3. And then to solve for t, you divide both sides by 7. And to two decimal places, t will be equal to, so here we're going to do ln 3, close parentheses, divided by 7. And to two decimal places, that will be 0 0.16. So t will be approximately 0 0.16. Okay. And that's all. Oh, sorry. Here we go. That's all I need to cover in this section 3.1. It is a very short section, and the homework problems are not that bad in my math lab for this section. So that does conclude this conclude section 3.1 dealing with the constant E and continuous compound interest. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about any of the problems that were presented in this video, or if you have home problems regarding the homework in section 3.1.